Hello everyone, welcome to another weekly tutorial by Eclip on my YouTube channel. So, by going through the comments that you were leaving on my previous videos, I came up to one question that is more frequent than the others, and it was about the baseline and the baseline that is transposing the nodes, which I call driving baselines. So, there are a few things that can go wrong when we are dealing with the baseline that are transposing nodes. So, the baselines that do not have only one node all the way up. And first thing is the synthesis. And there's a proper way how I think the synthesis should be done, which I'm going to show you. And the second thing is that when we transpose in other nodes, that because of the processing, those harmonics can provide and can be a little bit louder than in comparing when we do the bass line in the key root note. So let's say we have G and then you want to add the G2, so the one octave above the key root. And in that moment, the first harmonic can provide a little bit of boost and can be a bit louder than when we compare with the G1 note. And those two things I'm going to show you right now. So let's jump on this one. So let's start with this tutorial. So first thing when it comes to driving baseline or the baseline that changed the notes, the first thing that we need to pay attention on is the synthesis. And why is that? For example, here I have the baseline done with silent. And this baseline sounds really nice when it comes to one note only, as this baseline was designed for G tone only. And with silent, I want to show you the things that can get wrong. So if we play this bass line, we're going to see that when it plays the one note, the G only, that it sounds perfect. But when it comes to changing the notes, it will sound a bit different. So the bass line sounds really good in G, but every other note except G sounds a little bit kind of destroyed. And why is that? So when you design a bass line in silent, basically you just use one oscillator with retrieve on the saw wave. And then I always add two envelopes on the filter. One is for the short, really short click. And the other one is for a little bit more open for the body. And that way you provide a really nice body of the kick so that some of the cutoffs stay on the body and then one more click on top of it, just really shorter. So just the first pluck. So now when it comes to synthesis and when we choose the saw waveform, basically to get the click, you need to put a phase. For example, in this particular case, the position of the phase is on 160 degrees, as you can see. So what does that mean? So here we have the classic saw waveform. So basically, when you want to design a bass line that will sound good on every note, or actually when you change the notes so it doesn't change this attack on it or the transient, the best position for the waveform is at this point where is the red line. So what does that mean? So in this point here, if I move this start point, we will see that it rises up and then it just continues from the opposite phase. And in this moment over here, this moment right here, it will provide the click straight away. What does it mean? That when straight when you press the note, this is when the click is going to happen. So by the default on many VSTs, we have the start position from here. And what, why this is not a good position is because it will need some time to rise from this point is a silent point and then it will need some time and then it will provide a click. So the lower the note, the our waveform is bigger in length and the lower the note is, the more time it will need to provide this plug. This is why I always design my notes to start from this point over here as I want the first thing to happen in the baseline is the click, and then I will control how it will oscillate further on. So when we take the silent, silent on 160 degrees is something like this. 
and in this point it will provide a click but for in G but when the length of the waveform changes from when we change the notes then it's like this start point is playing left and right and it is not always starting on the same position so the only way to provide that every note of the bass line will start the same is if we put on this point right here which is usually 180 degrees so now if we come back to the silent and if I put it to 180 and if I play we have a good click on all other notes except in G if I move the phase on zero it just does not sound so good and the only way I could find the position of the phase for a silent is around 160 degrees 150 170 depends of how loud click you want but this is the good way only if you do the bass lines for only one note if you have a flat bass line if you want to transpose any notes I prefer much more to do it with serum as in serum as I said already if I had this standard waveform like this one here I would put the phase straight on this middle but I used for this case I used this basic mini which I like the most and then the phase is on the beginning that means that every note that's gonna be when you press the note it's gonna trigger from this point and it will provide the click straight away that way when you change the notes inside the bass line or in the track you won't have any changes so how I made this bass line so basically I loaded on oscillator A this basic mini waveform turn on the filter MG low 24 cutoff is around 300 and I connected envelope 2 to the cutoff as well with the 150 of milliseconds the decay sustain is at zero release on 15 but it doesn't matter because it's going all the way down and envelope 1 attack on zero hold zero 200 milliseconds decay and sustain is minus 12 as if it's going all the way up it's pr it will provide a lot of low end and I do not want that so sustain is gonna go on minus around minus 12 around here so I want to have decay going down on every note and that way to provide less low end and that way I provide much easier mixes later on and what I did the next so if I bypass this over here which I'm gonna show you next the baseline sounds like this I need to turn on this filter as well it's pretty harsh and because of that I always put another filter from the FX section turn it on cutoff is going here again to 300 and then connect the envelope 3 to this cutoff over here so I will just turn it on and now the baseline sounds like this flat So with all the other elements inside the track
As you could hear, there is no change in the bass line when it changed the note. This bass line is because the track is on 144, so basically the bass line is a little bit more open and when you want to change the notes, it's really smart if you open a cutoff just a little bit in comparing if you are doing a progressive. Progressive is supposed to have a more clickier bass line with the less body, while full on it sounds a bit better when those notes are kind of a little bit more open and there is not much difference between click and the body actually there is a less difference while in progressive it's usually the strong click and then the body is a little bit shorter i always chop one actually i render only one note of the bass line and i put it and i provide a little bit of fade out as well and in progressive on 140 138 for me it sounds much better if we have those shorter impulses that are just kind of acting like almost like a kick so it's the small impulse that is provide the click the body will be much shorter than in a full-on while for full-on it's better to have a little bit more body as it just provides a better groove when it's a cutoff is a little bit more open and there's not much difference between those clicks and that way it just makes the flow of a track a little bit better and of course you can do as well i'm gonna put this preset only for cubase users as i will just go file export selected tracks i will export xml so for cubase users you just need to download the file go import track from archive and choose this xml and it will provide you the all the processing and all the midis inside as well as the synthesis of the serum as well so one more thing is that I always put this band plus minus and which is always allow me if I want a bit more low end I will go on the left if I want less low end I will move it on the right so you can just adjust it by moving this knob over here as well there's also one another thing if it happened if you want to make your own bass lines and if it happened that when you change the note what can happen that some of these harmonics on those other notes gonna get boosted a little bit because of the processing and for each note this processing can be a little bit difficult as it might change some of those frequencies as you can see what i did here i was just zoomed in if it's turned off this just turn it off click around here and just zoom it in so i was playing the bass line and i saw the main harmonic you will see one of the the second actually harmonic of this bass line will be around here So you see when the note is changed, this harmonic moves left and right. So if it happened that you will see when the note is changed, if you get louder signal than when it's play on the key root of the track, then you just need to find those frequencies of those harmonics and then just to reduce them a little bit. You can do it like this, you can do it with spectral dynamics and this spectral dynamic is an amazing plugin because it searched the whole frequent range, it searched for those peaks, for those frequencies where the signal is loud and it will just reduce them on those points. You can see when the second note, the G, G and then when it goes to next note you will see that it's a little bit louder around just under 100 over here. And that way you can also find a sweet spot. See now only when the note is changed it will compress it a little bit and then you have a ratio here threshold let's say 2. So only those harmonics, when you change the note and that harmonic is get a little bit louder, it will compress only in that. If you set this processor one on the really good point, you will see that when the G note in this case, when it's play, it doesn't compress anything. But when the note is changed, then it provides a little bit louder harmonic on that part and it will compress only in that part. And this you can do as well with the dynamic EQ, but I believe those two processes are more than enough 
for you to have this baseline flat. And now we turned on spectral dynamics. I will play one more time to hear how does it sound. So that was the video of how to deal with the bass lines that are changing the notes inside the Psy Trance. And that will be it for this week. And please comment below what would you like to see next. And I will give my best and I will see what are the most requested questions that you asked. And I will do next week another tutorial about one of those topics. Thank you very much for watching. And next week I'm going to come back with another tutorial. So stay safe and wish you all the best in those weird times. Bye. Ciao.